OpenAI had some major launches last week, including GPT OSS, which is an open source model, and then GPT 5, one of the most anticipated model and that had a lot of excitement. First was the open source model release. These were two different models. One is the 20 billion parameter and the other one was the 120 billion parameter. The 20 billion parameter is equivalent to using O3 mini model, which is a reasoning model and it does quite well with many reasoning tasks and then the 120 billion parameter model this is very similar to using 04 mini which is one of the top of the line reasoning models from OpenAI it excels with agentic encoding tasks and then of course is the release of GPT-5 this is the latest and the greatest model from OpenAI it excels at coding it excels at reasoning it excels in many agentic tasks and this comes in three different flavors. First is the GPT-5. This is the regular model. Then there is the mini and the nano version. So tasks that are very simple can be done by nano. Mini does some medium level complexity tasks, whereas GPT-5 is the one that can do all of the heavy lifting tasks for you. And we're going to look at how we can use these models within Langflow. There are many different ways we can use it. We're going to look at one of the providers, which is quite popular, and that is Open Router. Open Router is a platform where you can use models from many different providers, including OpenAI, Anthropic, Google's Gemini, and there are hundreds of other providers that we could use with just one API key. And the pricing is also very competitive and it's very popular among the developer circle. So first thing we're going to do is in the Langflow instance, we're going to start with a basic prompting setup. And this has OpenAI language model as the default. If you were to update the Langflow version, you'll see all of the latest models available here. Now we're going to swap this out with the open router component. And that is something available. If you were to look under components, you'll notice there is the open router component here. So I'm going to drag and drop the component and the things that we're going to need. So I'm just going to remove the open AI block and then connect this block here. And the chat message is going to go to the input and the prompt. I'm going to make that as the system message. And then of course the output is going to go to the chat output. Now the cool thing is as soon as you add the API key, which is something you can grab from your open router account, you might have to add some credits at the beginning to get started with the API keys. You'll notice that your provider list is going to be refreshed. You can give it a few seconds and then you'll see the huge list of all of the models available here. I'm going to zoom it a little bit just to give an idea of all of the models available here. So I'm going to search for OpenAI and then within that we are going to look through the model list. Now the models as you see there are all of the previous models available here including the latest models that we just saw so one is the gpt oss this is the 120 billion parameter as well as the 20 billion and there's also apparently this free model that we can utilize just to test if everything is working fine and with that i am just gonna build and see if it builds properly and that was a success i'm gonna go to the playground and see that we have some response here now, same thing with the 120 billion parameter model. We could select that and then we can ask another question here. And that is a quick response as well. Now we can always go back to open router just to see what is the usage and it will show you exactly what was the usage for each of the messages. So in first case, 20 billion is free. So that is zero cost here. And then the 120 billion, there is certain costs associated with the message that we sent. Open router has a very transparent pricing as well as you can see exactly how much you spend so you have a good idea on the token usage as well as the cost involved. Now as mentioned there are multiple providers who are offering GPT OSS since it is an open source model. One of the notable provider is Grok. Grok is one of the fastest inference right now in the market and they have a deployed version of GPT OSS so we can grab the Grok component and add our API key. Now in the model list, you might have to refresh the list and you'll see that the GPT OSS models are available. And these are similar, so both 
120B and 120B models are available here as well. Now we're going to test these in an agentic setup as well. But before that, I just want to quickly test the GPT-5 models available in Open Router. So let's start with GPT-5 Nano. And here we're going to do the same thing. Ask a simple prompt and see the response. You'll notice that it takes a few more seconds than the other models, but then you have a detailed response here. And this is based on the system prompt that we had that you are a Gen AI expert and you help out with any queries from the user. So based on the prompt, the GPT-5 model is willing to help on those tasks and it provides a detailed list of what it can do for us. Now, I want to test the agentic capability of GPT-5. So I'm going to go with the template for research agent. This is one of the available templates in the template section for agent. And I just selected research agent. And within this template, we'll see there is the initial prompt that we are going to provide as an input to the AI agent. In this particular case, it's talking about AI hallucinations. And then we have a prompt that is going to act as the system message or system prompt for the first first language model. And in this particular case, we're saying that you are an expert research assistant. And this is the format that your response is going to be. We take that response and then we pass it to second agent. So this is a sequential agent setup. And in this particular case, we are going to take the research plan and using the Tavili search, we are going to perform the queries. And based on that, we are going to pass the info over to the third language model, which will aggregate the research findings and the original query. And then also along with that, the search results, and it will generate a report for us. And the report is going to be in a certain format. So you notice that there are multiple agents and we can provide different models in in this case. So what I want to do is I want to use a different language model here. So in this case, I want to use the open source version and the cheapest, the free version that I can use. So that's going to be for the first language model. Second one here, this is performing the search query. So we can leave this as is not an issue. The third one is where I want to use something with more of reasoning capability. So that's going to be GPT-5 in my case. So now I'm going to bring the open router component and then and quickly connect that to the original setup. Great. So I've got the open source version here and then I use the GPT-5 Nano. Nano should be good enough for our case. If not, we can move up to mini or the regular GPT-5 model. And with that, I'm going to leave the prompt as is and also the chat input as is and I will get started. So as soon as we start, we'll notice that the overall run is quite fast. So in this case, where it called the GPT OSS model, this took about three seconds or so. We got the response back and we can look at the response here. So this was the research objective, the search queries and the priorities. And this was taken by the next model. And this is where it's taken a few seconds because it wants to make sure that the queries get some good response. So we get certain response in this case. So along with the queries, we're going to see how the search results look like. So this is what the GPD 40 model got for us. And once we go downstream, the GPD 5 nano model is going to take all of the info available to it. So if we want to inspect the results, we can see that we have the research findings and it's truncated. So there is more text here as well. And that along with the original query was passed to the GPD 5 nano model. And we can inspect the result here or we can open playground and see exactly what was presented. So you can see the report is quite detailed and there is the executive summary, then there is the methodology and then the details below that. And this is just from the GPT-5 nano model. So one could go up a bit on the mini or the regular GPT-5 model and you can expect even longer responses. And what's great is it was able to cite all of the links or research that it utilized and it gave it a nice presentable format. You're probably going to notice that the GPT-5 models are going to be good at a few different things. And if you're looking to optimize the cost or faster inference, you could go with the GPT OSS model. Or if you want to go with faster inference, then definitely you can go with something like Rock. Feel free to share what you build with these models.